They hate when you elevate They stacking up losses, I'm handing them out, yeah, I had to go delegate They feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could levitate They never believed that I would really fly, I had to go demonstrate I had to set them straight They hate when you elevate Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome home. I am Ashley Michelle. I'm an intuitive mystic, a healer, spiritual worker, and fitness coach. And I talk all things physical wellness, spiritual wellness, emotional wellness. We combine all three of these things to create our best self. And today we are talking about the full moon in Capricorn. Okay, so we have a full moon in Capricorn coming up this Sunday. If I can figure out how to put the chart in this video, I will do it somewhere. And if not, I will link the chart down below in the video notes. But this is our third time working with Capricorn's energy this year. We had a new moon in Capricorn at the start of the year, and we had a full moon in Capricorn just a few weeks, a couple months back. And now we are working with another full moon in Capricorn. And Capricorn's energy is all about the being the go-getter, you know, um, achievement, very goal-oriented, accomplishments, you know, doing the hard thing to gain the recognition. Capricorn loves wealth and wealth energetics. Capricorn works hard and often doesn't know when we need to take a break, we need to take a beat, we need to chill out, we need to relax, right? And full moons are all about the release, the letting go. And if you haven't been to one of my moon circles, I highly suggest you come. I am hosting a moon circle for the full moon in Capricorn this Monday coming up. Um, I'm doing some travel. You guys will find out about that on the YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe um, because I'll be doing a whole separate vlog about where I'm going this weekend and uh, why. And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with my prep bodybuilding journey that you all know I'm on and my spiritual work. The combination, darling. Everything I wanted. So, this Monday, I'll be hosting a full moon in Capricorn ceremony. The link to sign up will be also down below in the notes. Um, but on full moons, we release, we let go. And so this full moon in Capricorn is a beautiful time to understand the unhealthy boundaries that maybe we put on ourselves and on our lives and what isn't working. So today I'm going to get into it with you because we have a lot to get through. We are going to be looking at all signs. Okay. Starting with the babies of the Zodiac Aries. I'm going to be pulling tarot cards and Oracle cards for each of you. All right. If I can, I'm going to do timestamps. Um, let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it, right? This is one of my favorite tarot decks to work with. I work with this deck very often. My energy is all over it. So we're going to be starting with Aries energy, right? And these readings can be amazing for your sun, moon, or rising. You can combine the your intuitive messages for all three to understand where the work needs to be placed um, for this full moon cycle. So our Aries babes, let's talk about it. So I'm going to start something off automatically, right? You are feeling overwhelmed, incredibly overwhelmed. The busyness is a lot. You're busy. You're booked and busy. You're doing your big one. You're doing your thing. Woo, did you guys see that? Huh? Okay, let's talk about it. So our two, where should I be looking? Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. Is she focusing? Focus, focus. Focus. There we go. So our two of cups, our two of, um, so our two of pentacles is all about feeling busy, juggling a lot of things at once and not knowing how to properly time manage and trying to do everything. Right behind it, you have the 10 of wands coming in, but the 10 of wands is coming in upside down, which means essentially that you don't have any fight left, right? You don't have any fight left. You don't know what you want to focus on. You don't know where you want to go, any of that. There's no fight left for you. And it's causing a problem, right? You have too much on your plate. The King of Cups is coming in upside down as well. 
I'm going to tell you something. The King of Cups coming in upside down, Aries, is essentially a sign that um, somebody is doing some emotional manipulation here. Okay. There we go. Sorry about the lighting, friends. I'm still learning this camera. I'm not going to focus too much on that. But... Anyway, somebody's doing some emotional manipulation here. Like I said, the full moon in Capricorn is about understanding where we put unhealthy boundaries on ourselves. So are you telling yourself that you're not good enough unless you're doing X, Y, and Z? It's something for you to think about. The Oracle card that we pulled for you today was relief. How can you find relief, Aries? What needs to go off of the to-do list for you to find some sort of relief in the life that you're leading. It's something to think about, okay? Now, uh, let's pull four, and I'm gonna re-put in all the cards that I'm using, just in case another zodiac sign needs some of the same energy. You never know, okay? So after Aries, we have our lovely Taurus, and okay, the bull, right? And we love the bull. The bull is stubborn. The bull loves money. The bull can be a bit possessive. The bull is a creature of comfort. And the bull is also an earth sign, just like Capricorn. So this full moon in Capricorn, it's a full moon in an earth sign, right? Grounding energy, reconnection with earth. Okay, that's number one. So we pulled the hanged one for you, and then the sun, and then we pulled the six of pentacles for you, Taurus. So I'm going to tell you off jump, we need to be a bit more generous, okay? That's where we're going to start. And we need to let go and let God, and let go and let God. Why am I saying that? Because the hanged one or the hanged man is literally about letting things go. And we know that our Taurus energy can be a petty bitch, Okay, we know that. It's a matter of fact. We love our Tauruses, but they can be petty AF. And nothing's wrong with that. Sometimes you need a little bit of petty in your life. But when it comes to these boundaries, when it comes to the work that we're here to do here on Earth, and when it comes to working with the full moon in Capricorn, how can we stay grounded and rooted in our sense of self and let go of some of these unhealthy patterns that maybe we've created with other people, right? The sun comes in right afterwards, Taurus. And so I'm gonna tell you to let go and let God, let go of the petty behavior and step into the sun. You know, how can we take the higher road when it comes to certain relationships that we may have and certain relationship dynamics? And the Six of Pentacles comes in afterwards, which is our card of generosity. It's our card of giving to other people unapologetically. That is literally what the Six of Pentacles is. And so where can you be more generous? Not necessarily financially, although it could be for you, Taurus. I don't know your bag. I don't presume to know your bag, okay? But how can you be more generous? Maybe it's with your time. Maybe it's with understanding where somebody's coming from, right? You want somebody to do one thing and they're moving on to do another, right? How does that change? The Oracle card you got is past life. And so what I'm going to tell you, Taurus, is during this full moon in Capricorn, you may want to do some deep meditation on past lives that you've been in. A big um, misconception is that past lives are all about like previous incarnations, but past lives can be past versions of yourself inside of this incarnation. So what sort of behaviors do you have currently that you want to be a previous version of yourself? That is what we want to look at. And remember, full moons are about letting go. They're about releasing previous stories, narratives, visions, and versions of ourselves to step into the version of ourselves that we deserve and desire to become, right? And so how can you do that, Taurus? How can you embody that? And we know our Taurus energy is incredibly stubborn and they like what they like and that is who they are. But what if we did it different? What if we decided that we were going to do something a little different, right? What then? Would it really be the end of the world? Our beautiful Gemini twins are up next, right? We love the Gemini, depending on who you ask. Some people don't love Geminis because they say that they're gossipy, you know, that they have two faces and all that. But I think Geminis are incredibly fun, incredibly curious, and they're lighthearted. And sometimes the lighthearted energy is exactly what the doctor ordered, right? So let's see what we get for our Gemini babes. Okie dokie. So a few things for you, Gemini. First thing, we're getting two out of the three cards upside down. Okay, so Gemini, you're going to be experiencing some blocked energy during this full moon in Capricorn. Whenever we have blocked energy, that's expected. Life isn't, um, it's not a series of 
open energy, right? It's not a series of like, everything works for me all the time. For some of us, some moon cycles are going to be harder than others. And for my Gemini babes, this might be a bit of a harder moon cycle, okay? The two of wands comes in for you, Gemini. The two of wands comes in for you and it comes in for you upside down. There's a, a version of you that feels a little lost, right? Like you don't know your path, like you're not sure what's next. And you're not really sure how to feel that. But all you're wanting is happiness. You're wanting your happily ever after, says the four of wands coming in, okay? You're wanting your happily ever after, your, your happiness, right? But again, with this card coming in upside down, you're not as happy right now where you're at as... Maybe you're leading other people to believe. And that might be where this two-faced sort of energy comes from with the Gemini. Um, I'm going to give you, you know, some tough love right now, Gemini. Our seven of pentacles is coming in upside down for you. You're not working hard enough, right? So it's interesting to say that because Capricorn is a hard worker and we have a full moon and it's about letting go, right? But for some of us, we have to let go of this idea that like, we are doing enough when we're not. For example, right, you know, you're in a space and it's like, oh my God, like I wanna lose 10 pounds, I wanna lose 10 pounds, I wanna lose 10 pounds, I'm doing everything I can to lose 10 pounds. You know, but in reality, you're not going to the gym, you're not walking around your neighborhood, you're still eating shitty food, and you're like, I don't understand why the 10 pounds just isn't coming off when you're doing the bare minimum, which might be drinking water every day, and you think that's gonna do it. Do you know what I mean, Gemini? And so what I'm telling you, Gemini, is that's the vibe here right now. What is your four of wands for you? When I say your four of wands, let me see if I can show you the card. And she'll focus for me. This card is about happiness. Oh, technology. There we go. It's about happiness. It's about the happy ending. It's about connection. It's about love, right? Four is a number of balance in the tarot. When we're working with four, we're working with harmony. It's a harmonic number. And this is the only card out of your three that came in right side up. Your first card, Gemini, Gemini comes in upside down. And this card, as I said before, is all about this blocked energy of not knowing where you're going next, almost kind of like losing your footing, if you will. Losing your footing to find your happiness because you're not working hard enough. And maybe the hard work is about understanding what that means to you. Maybe that's what it's about, understanding what happiness actually means to you and what that looks like, Gemini. And so during this full moon in Capricorn, I would urge you to define it. Define it. What does that mean for you, right? And your oracle card that you get is divinity. One of my favorite oracle cards in this deck, the Marcella Kroll deck, right? Divinity, your divine self, divine one, right? What does divinity mean for you? When you are sitting with the divine, what sort of energetic frequency are you holding? How can you make more of that? My Gemini babes are going to be just fine. Okay. Let's talk Cancer. Our Cancer energy, Cancer the Crab, they are one of the most intuitive water signs of the Zodiac, right? Incredibly, incredibly psychic. And, you know, they always feel a lot. Our Cancers are empaths, okay? They are empaths and they're naturally intuitive and they always have something not really to say, but they're really good listeners. And more often than not, if you know a person who has a cancer rising, a cancer sun or a cancer moon, you know what it feels like to feel safe, right? Cancers make you feel safe and seen. But sometimes cancers don't always feel safe or seen, right? Cancer is also the opposite of Capricorn on the zodiacal wheel. And whenever we're working with opposite energies, there's one to learn from the other. Where Capricorn can be quite introverted and not really wanting the energy or conversation of others because Capricorn is busy doing work, Cancer is also quite introverted, but doesn't really mind the company of others. In fact, you know, speaking to others, having others speak to them, they feel they feel and see safety in that. Mm. 
okay so cancers we're we're getting the queen of swords for you coming in right side up and then we've got temperance coming in after that and then we have the knight of cups coming in after that so let's talk about it okay and so our queen of swords you know she's a boss ass bitch 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 she really 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 is but the swords energy is about intellect cancer so this full moon cycle is less about you focusing on your emotional body and more about you focusing on your mental clarity really right when it comes to your goals when it comes to your boundaries when it comes to your mental health and well-being when it comes to your wealth frequency when it comes to all of those things you may have been looking at life through this quite emotional lens for this last year right temperance is our card of mutability it's our card of change when we're working with temperance energy we are working with the frequency of change and not just change but having grace through change, which not all of us do. Some of us don't deal with change lightly. My cancer babes, I'm talking to you. I know that because I'm a cancer rising. We don't always accept change, right? You know, for what it is. Um, temperance is calling you higher. Okay, babe. The way that you are creating the boundaries that you have for yourself and for others, we might need to use more mental clarity on that. That means think with your mind and not your heart, essentially. More on that, the Knight of Cups is coming in upside down. Our Knights, our messengers, they always have something to say. Our Knight of Cups right side up is our Knight in Shining Armor. Upside down, this is another card that can indicate emotional manipulation. So our Cancer Babes in the room, you know, do we have less or maybe even no boundaries when it comes to people that we love and we know that we should have some more. We know that maybe even we're being taken advantage of. Maybe there are certain people in our lives that are blocking our blessing. And we're trying to figure out how to navigate that. Right? Look at this though, baby. That Oracle card is lucky. So Cancer, I know you feel a lot, right? And I know you can intuitively tap into other people's emotions and feelings. And so maybe some of the boundary work that needs to be done, you are a little fearful or worried about it because the relationship dynamic may change in some way, shape or form and you're not sure how to navigate that. But with this Oracle card coming in, lucky, 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 maybe having certain conversations that need to be had is going to open up doors for even more explorative and expansive conversations that need to happen in your life. And you're going to feel this sense of luck. Like, okay, what I thought was going to be so bad or horrendous is actually exactly exactly what I needed maybe just maybe baby just saying okie dokie so let's talk about our Leo babes sorry if you guys can hear all the buzzing outside and or Rico Suave Rico Suave come say hi Ugh. Nugget needs a haircut but you guys can say hi when you hi to baby oh you smell like dog food baby boo Rico's a Taurus. Okay. So, where were we? We just did Cancer. Let's do Leo. Okay. Our Leo babes, a uh, fire sign, right? They love to be the center of attention. They're loud, they're boisterous, they're fun. You know, they love to host. You know, they are great party hosters. They also love art, right? Our Leos are a blast to hang out with. And of course, we pull fire energy for you, Leo. All three of your cards are fire energy. All right, let's talk about it. We've got the Queen of Wands coming up. We have the Four of Wands coming up that we just saw with one of the previous signs, but this time she's coming up upside down. We also have the Sun coming up upside down. Tone it down, Leo. That's what I'm going to tell you. This moon cycle is for you to rest. 
It's for you to reel everything back. You don't always have to be on. A big misconception about Leo is that they want to be the center of attention, but I think what people don't understand or recognize about Leo, it's not necessarily about being the center of attention. It's about how they feel like they get love. You know, when Leos are loud and entertaining and theatrical, they feel like when they get that sort of praise that they interpret that as love, just like the Capricorn interprets their praise for the accomplishments that they make through through love like that's how they get their love right the praise of the accomplishments that they make and so leo we love this queen of wands energy that's coming in she's a whole vibe too our queen of wands is eccentric she's fun loving she's also a great host of the party very like uh, very vibey the queen of wands okay there we go perfect okay but now is not really the time for that energy. The reason why I'm saying that is because, like I said, the Four of Wands is coming in upside down. That balance number. You are out of balance. You're out of whack. You need to find your way back to the sun, Leo. So this full moon energy for you is about restoration on a deep way. Okay? It's about being, like, restoring your cup, refilling your cup up. All right? Air comes in as your oracle card leo i'd go for a hike i'd go for a walk maybe do a weekend getaway i would do some breath work if you're into that sort of stuff you know what i mean maybe even a sauna is what is coming into my head right now spending some time just like deep breathing in the sauna or the steam room have y'all ever done that it's a whole vibe let me know in the comments below sauna or steam room i can't decide sometimes i get in a steam room mood and sometimes i get in a sauna mood Lately, I've been doing sauna, though. Did you know that 20 minutes three times a week in a sauna can reduce um, your chances of getting cancer by like 20%, I think? Don't quote me, but it's some sort of stat like that because um, it causes like the cells, the, the heat causes the cells to like regenerate or like the shitty cells to die off. It's something like that. But... Leo, you gotta, you gotta rest. You've been on too much. And honestly, Leo, that makes sense. We're in your season. This full moon in Capricorn is in Leo's season, right? It's late July. So the sun is in Leo. So of course my Leos out there are like, Brrr! you know what I mean? So um, take a beat this weekend. Allow yourself to be this weekend. Allow yourself to sit inside all that you have manifested this weekend and stop doing so much and sit in gratitude for what you've done, my Leo babes, right? My Virgos in the house, let's talk about you all, okay? My Virgos, you guys get a bad shade, a bad like rap for perfectionism, OCD, all of that good stuff. Y'all just like things the way that you like things and that's how you like things and you said what you said. That's it. That's it. Um, Virgos, y'all are earth signs as well, right? And so that earth energy, that grounding energy, that still energy is going to be an energy that you're going to want to tap into in general. Virgos. Yeah, you, you got to spice on all three cards, huh? No, you three cards. Spice Okie dokie, Virgo. So let's talk for a little bit, okay? So my Virgos in the house. We got the Three of Wands coming up, then we got the Tower card, and then we have the Three of Pentacles coming in upside down. So I'm gonna tell you something, three is a manifestation number in the tarot, okay? Whenever we're working with three, we are making something. We are in the pocket of creation. And so our Three of Wands coming up, I'll show you guys here. This is like, I am ready. I am ready to do something different. I am ready to come off like the path. I'm ready to do my big one that red dress look at the red dress like this is like let's fucking get it let's go right i still haven't figured out if i can curse on youtube or not but they gonna have a problem if i can't because y'all know i got a potty mouth but we'll figure it out the tower card comes in and a lot of people are scared of the tower card but what i need to tell you and what i want to tell you is that the tower card it is the element of surprise but it's not like a negative or bad surprise not always it's just like something is going to happen upon you that you didn't know was going to happen that's all it really is and so we have a tower moment coming in for this weekend for this full moon in capricorn for you um and we also have our three of pentacles coming in upside down this card my friends my virgo friends is about asking for help it's about how 
three individuals come together to make an idea into fruition. It's the three of pentacles is about not doing something on your own and being okay with that and being okay to ask for help and guidance, Virgos. And Virgos, that is your Achilles heel. Y'all don't really like to ask for help all the time. You really don't. And so it feels like this full moon in Capricorn might be a space for you to do your big one, right? You have this amazing idea. You want to get off the ground. You want to do something crazy. You want to do something great. But then a tower moment kind of sets you back, but you still are not asking for help. This full moon cycle, my earth signs, my earth signs, my Virgos, where do you need help? And how can you ask for more help? Because that's what needs to happen, babe. That's what needs to happen. Okay. Okay, my love. So we just finished Virgo. So now let's talk a bit about Libra. Okay. So Libra, we are an air sign now. We're an air's energy. Our Libras, much like the Leos, make fantastic, fantastic hosts. Um, they're lovers, not fighters. Libras, I love to call Switzerland, right, of the Zodiac because they often don't want to make a decision. They want to be friends with everybody and they're most closely associated with the Justice card in the Tarot. Okay, Libra, so um, much like um, the card that came in before, we got our Three of Wands, this energy of wanting to express yourself in a bigger, more grandiose way, right? The Three of Wands can be looked at as an expander. It's an expansion card, right? We've been sitting in the same spot for a long time. Maybe we want to move. Maybe we had the same job for a long time. Maybe we want something different. Maybe we've had this idea in our head for a long time, but we've never pulled the trigger, right? Whatever that is for you. Here's what's different, though, about the last time we pulled it. Here's what's coming in next to it. Our Page of Wands, right? Pages in the tarot, they are they are the most youthful, right, out of all four of the royals. We've got pages, knights, kings, and queens. And the pages are known to be the more immature, they still have so much to learn about the world around them, but that's what makes them malleable and moldable. And the Page of Wands is excited about life and excited about what's next, right? The Page of Wands isn't jarred or scarred by the world, right? They haven't been hurt yet. They haven't seen the pain that life can give sometimes, right? They are joyful and gleeful about what's next so the card that comes in right afterwards though which is interesting is our two of cups upside down okay and this card is about love life and partnerships okay whenever we're dealing with cup energy we are dealing with what we love who we love how we love libra you are a person that loves connection you are a person that loves relationships. You are a person that feels comfortable in this space of relationship. And so Libra, this full moon in Capricorn is about doing your big one, our three of wands, alone. It's about not feeling the need to ask for help. Last time we saw it, right? It was like, we need to ask for help. Libra, you always ask for help. You always ask what somebody thinks about an idea, an event, or situation. And so right now, Libra, is not the time for you to do that. Right now is the time for you to not ask for help. For you to decide, this is what I want to do next, and this is what I'm going to do next. Unapologetically. And not second guessing yourself about it. The card that we got for your oracle card is fire. And I believe this is super fitting because our fire signs on the zodiac are very independent, right? They're very like, I do what I want, when I want, how I want. And so Libra, it might be time for you to take some of that fire energy to yourself. And, and for this full moon in Capricorn, what have I been wanting to do, but I've been too afraid to do alone? And really diving deep into the shadows behind being afraid of doing whatever that is alone. What is that for you? Explore that. And I think you'd be shocked at some of the answers that you find. Okie dokie. Let's do Scorpio. Everybody's favorite, right? 
our Scorpios, you know, they're the dark divine of the zodiac, right? Magic, power, mysticism, secrecy, you know, independence, the loner vibe when we're working with Scorpionic energy, the water signs, incredibly emotionally intuitive, but they keep a lot of them to themselves to the cuff. They keep it to themselves. So let's take a look at what Scorpio needs to hear for this for this full moon in Capricorn. And of course, in true fashion, our Scorpio cards get all upside down. They, they come in all upside down. Of course. Scorpio, you got blocks, babe, and I'm not surprised. You know, Scorpionic energy and Capricornian energy are, are very different, right? When I think of Scorpionic energy, I think of, again, the secrecy, and I think of this rise to power, but often the shadows. When I think of Capricorn energy, I also think of this rise to power, but they want everybody to know. Like, Capricorn is like, I'm going for your spot, and I'm going to take it and watch me do it. Scorpio's like, I'm going for their spot, and they're never going to know what hit them. There's the difference in those power dynamics that we're working with, right? But Scorpio, in this specific full moon, we are looking at an imbalance of power. And um, as, when it comes to emotional manipulation, I'm going to tell you. And Scorpio, I think this is you. So I really do believe that you might want to take a look at why you feel the way you feel about what you feel. And Scorpio, I know you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? You know, you may feel a certain type of way with certain people on your team, with certain things that are happening, with the way that life is going for you with whatever it is maybe you're mad about something because Scorpios also love to be petty but I, I think that right now this idea of emotional manipulation is coming up quite aggressively for you and I need you to understand Scorpio how your emotions are getting in the way of your bag that's what I really need you to understand this is what I'm saying why am I saying this we get our knight of cups coming in upside down okay so that's our first upside down cards our knights are messengers look at this white steed he's on right they are messengers they have something to say and the knight is that lesser form that lesser evolved that less mature energy of the king of cups okay right afterwards we have our star card upside down the card of hope Hopes and dreams right so your hopes and dreams are being blocked Scorpio why and then we have our king of cups coming in upside down right after that because you are getting in your own way because of your emotional energy right your emotional maturity your emotional integrity Scorpio this might be hard for you to hear but I think you really need to have some some brain thoughts about your feelings right and when I say your feelings, I mean the major themes of life, your personal life, your romantic life, your career life, your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health. I'm like all of those boxes. Take a good, strong look at how you feel about what you feel, about who you feel, about why you feel. What I'm, essentially what I'm saying, Scorpio, to put it to you. Ah! 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 Spiritual cleansing comes in as your oracle card, babe. This full moon in Capricorn is a chance for you to realign, right? You're too deep in the gutter right now when it comes to your feelings, right? And again, Scorpio is so close to the cuff. So it's not like you're out here acting out or acting up. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is clearly some things got you feeling a certain type of way. Only you know what that is, Scorpio. You feel in a certain type of way. Why? How? What? How can we fix it? What is happening right now? Because this ain't it. Utilize this full moon in Capricorn as a, a place to spiritual cleanse, a way to spiritually cleanse. And what's interesting is we love full moons and water signs for spiritual cleansing. And so I think it's interesting that the water sign is getting a spiritual cleansing for an earth full moon, right? So my Scorpio babes out there, you guys need to ground. So instead of cleansing and water, like taking a spiritual bath, I would do some serious grounding techniques with Pachamama, Mama Earth, right? I would go out into the earth, barefoot, and do some deep breathing, some breathing meditations, right? Reconnecting with Pachamama. And also do some serious analyzing. Also do some serious analyzing um, 
about some of the feelings that you feel again right what you feel why you feel into who you feel it for um double whammy because this card jumped out as you guys saw divine feminine comes in scorpio you can be considered incredibly divine and feminine but sometimes the divine gets a little lost right and scorpio is a feminine sign and very much so stuck in its feminine um not to say that being stuck in feminine is something wrong or bad or disempowering but to say how do we keep the divine with that right Divine masculine, divine feminine, both things, right? How do we make sure that bridge stays the way it needs to, okay? So that's my that's my Scorpionic take. That's Scorpio. Let's talk Sag. Let's talk Sag. I'm a Sag son. Our Sag is right. We're freedom lovers. We're philosophers. We're travelers. We're go-getters. We're kind of fickle. We're a little tactless, right? All those things, right? Ooh! Oh! We got jealousy, honey. What are we jealous about? What happened? Who did it? Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Let's see what three cards we need. Jealousy is an interesting one because jealousy would be the last word I would use to describe Sagittarius. And I think a lot of astrologers would agree with me. But you know, we are all capable of all feelings and emotions, right? And so it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, the cards are reading for Phil today, darlings. So um, Sagittarius, babe, we've got our two of swords coming in upside down, right? We, again, going back to the thinking situation, we are overthinking and we're probably overstimulated because we're overthinking. So put a bite, put a bookmark in this, right? Coming in right afterwards is our seven of cups, babe. This is our dream state card, right? We're like in la la land, like da 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 da. But at the same time, we're overthinking. Are we overthinking in la la land? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? We're over here thinking too much about things that don't matter. That's what I'm getting at. Jealousy card, right? Too much about things that don't matter. I'm getting some intuitive hits right now. Jealousy card, this doesn't necessarily mean that we might be the jealous ones. This could mean that there could be people jealous of us inside of our camp. So that's something to consider as well. It just came down intuitively. Take what you want and leave the rest. We're getting the devil card coming in afterwards. And people are always like shooketh when the devil card comes up. But I really want you to understand that the, all the devil means is the power of choice. The devil card is a Saturn ruled card. It's a Capricorn ruled card as well. Okay, so when we get the devil, we are really talking about the fact that we have choice and us knowing that we can make empowered decisions on our own, right? So Sagittarius, I just want to go back a little bit to this two of swords. Right. Two of swords coming in right side up is about using our third eye to make decisions. Right. Using our logical brain to make decisions, not necessarily our third eye can be considered a logical brain, not necessarily our emotions. Right. The water in tarot, whenever we see water in a tarot card, we're looking at our emotional body and the water is behind her for a reason. It is because her emotional body is not needed to make the decisions that she needs. She needs to use her third eye, her eye of intuition, to make the decisions that she needs to feed her soul. And so this full moon in Capricorn, my Sagittarius friends, let's just lead with our intuitive bodies. Let's lead with that divine feminine. Let's not be so logical about it. Our Sagittarians out there, we are known to be quite logical and quite A plus B always equals C. Don't tell me it equals D because it always equals C. Maybe this time it equals D. Maybe we're in the upside down and that's what the fuck it equals. Maybe, just maybe. And that's okay too. Do you know what I mean, Sagittarius? I want you to utilize this full moon in Capricorn to get out of your own way and out of your own thought bubbles and patterns, right? Just because we think it's about us doesn't mean it's necessarily about us. That is a big lesson right there. Let me repeat it for the people in the back. Just because we think it's about us doesn't mean it's about us. Okay? I need you to take that with you because your intuitive brain, your intuitive body is always going to know how to make the decisions that you need to step into what you desire and deserve. But you must have to allow spirit to let that happen. Full moon and Capricorn. We don't always have to control the narrative and or the situations. We can allow the narrative and or the situations to carry us into the work that we're supposed to do. Into the relationships that we're supposed to have. Into the connections that we're supposed to make. Into the people that we're supposed to be. 
Sometimes the square is not going to fit into the circle no matter how hard you push. Sometimes you just have to find a circle, you know? My Capricorns! Let's talk, Capricorn. Okie dokie, so full moon in Capricorn, your Capricorn sun, that essentially means that this moon is going to be conjunct or on top of your sun sign. Our sun sign in the zodiac is our sense of self, it's who we are, it's our ego, it's our presence, it's our essence, okay? And our moon is our subconscious body. So if the full moon is going over your sun sign, it's this combination, this connection, right? This deepening of the subconscious soul with our sun sign. And essentially, we feel a lot. We feel a lot. Wow. Okay, Capricorn, you ready to do your big one, baby? We got the King of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, and the Wheel coming in for you. Okay, so very powerful, authoritative cards. Authoritative? Authoritative? Cards of authority. Okay. Our King of Pentacles is, uh, that's, that's king shit, baby. I don't know what else to tell you. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting Oracle card that we pulled. So the King of Pentacles comes in, right? Here we go. Our King of Pentacles comes in right side up. And whenever we're dealing with King of Pentacles energy, we're dealing with boss, bitch, boss, man energy. You know, everything, all your ducks are in a row. Let's get this money. Let's get this bag. Let's get this paper. Let's put down security deposits. Let's do 401ks. Let's get it, get it. Let's build homes. Let's buy, let's, let's make big purchases or save big loads of money, right? This is wealth energetics on steroids. So our Capricorns, I would really take a look at your finances, your budgeting, right? How how can we look at our financial goals for 2024 and stay on track to make sure we get there, right? The Queen of Wands energy is really doing that. How can we combine this masculine energy, the energy of wealth energetics with this feminine energy, the energy of flow, right? The thing about Capricorn, love you guys to death, but one of your Achilles heels or like qualms is that it's a bit hard for you to flow, Everything is kind of strict and tight and restricted. And y'all are stingy. Not all of you, but a lot of you. And so it wouldn't be a bad idea to A, look at the finances. Are we on track for the goals for 2024 and for 2025? But B, like, can we live a little? Remember, the wheel comes in and this too shall pass. That's really what the wheel stands for, right? The wheel of time. It's a 10 card in the tarot. Nine ends a cycle, 10 begins a new one. So when we're working with 10 energy, it's ready to start a new cycle, a new way of doing things, a new way of working with our wealth energetics, okay? Now, the, the oracle card that you got is lucky okay but you got this card coming in upside down does it mean unlucky not necessarily so really what this card is saying is we got to do things a bit differently than the way we've been doing things that's all it really means so this energy this green energy this money energy keeps coming through I want you to understand something, Capricorn. Like begets like. So when we stay in a pocket of restriction and resistance, guess what happens? We create more of it. So my Capricorns out there that are like, holy shit, Ashley, you're reading me to filth right now. I need you to let go of that dollar, boo, because there's more dollars where that comes from. Remember, money likes to flow. Money is a master teacher and money is neutral. So I need you to remember that, like, let allow me to be in a flow state. Do I mean go and spend all your dollars right now on a PS5 six? Six, seven, eight, whatever the fuck they're making right now. No, that's not what I mean. But what I mean is, if you are resonating with the fact that maybe you're a little stingy, maybe you cut corners all the time, maybe you go out to a nice dinner with your partner or a loved one on this full moon in Capricorn. Maybe you splurge a little and get the fucking um, premium cut of steak. Do you know what I mean? And at that dinner, you have those conversations around your financial goals for 2024 and 2025. Do you get what I'm saying? You can do both, Capricorn. You can do both, right? That, that restriction and the boundary is what we're looking to break down during this full moon cycle, right? Unhealthy boundaries in general, okay? Okay, 
Let's talk Aquarius. I thought I wasn't recording for a second. I got scared. Okay, let's talk Aquarius. So my Aquarius babes in the house, the weirdos, the freaks of the Zodiac, the revolutionaries, the geniuses of the Zodiac, right? Love Aquarius energy, right? You all stand up for the little guy. You got your social workers, your, your rioters. You guys have things to say. You want a new world. You want a new earth. And you will do whatever you need to get it. I'm just being called to break up the deck just a little bit before we start. You guys are air signs as well. Mm. And of course, my Aquarius energy is not resting. So listen, Aquarius, I have to tell you a few things, okay? You have great ideas. You have great ideas. But they cannot come into fruition unless you believe them. And also, unless you, you do something about them, you are proactive, okay? So our Four of Swords is coming in, but our Four of Swords is coming in upside down, which means it's time to act. It's time to move. It's time to do something about the thing that I say I'm going to do something about. The Page of Wands is coming in again, but she's coming in upside down this time. This idea that like we have spark, we have drive, we are ready, but it might be a bit misdirected or it, you, there might be some fear around movement or change, Aquarius. And the reason why I'm saying that is because our Nine of Cups is coming in right side up. Baby, this is our wish card. When the Nine of Cups comes in this is like whatever the fuck I want I get whatever the fuck I want I have whatever I desire and deserve it's coming to me I am living inside of the manifestation right this is what the nine of cups is so whenever this card comes in it is a cue for me as the reader to tell you to believe in you and to believe in what you want and so with this full moon coming in in Capricorn I really want you Aquarius to think about limiting behaviors beliefs and narratives that have held you back who did it who told you you weren't enough who told you you weren't smart enough who told you you didn't have enough drive who told you that you would never make enough money who did that for you was it a teacher was it a partner was it a friend was it an ex-friend right who did that and how have you noticed that those narratives are still coming up in your everyday life how have you noticed you must trust the process Aquarius and Aquarius can be fickle bitches. I'm an Aquarius moon, so I get it. You know, they can be fickle bitches. Um, and Aquarius also isn't about the whole feeling thing. Aquarius is like, I've got people to conquer. I've got dynasties to take down. I've got dictatorships to burn to the ground. I don't have time for your feelings, boo. But Aquarius, I need you to have time for your feelings because while you're over there burning down dictatorships, you know, you are sitting in a pocket of being unsure of your worthiness to burn down said dictatorships. So I just want you to sit on that, okay? And last but not least, our Pisces bays in the house. Pisces, I love you. Let's talk a little bit. I want you all to not forget to, um, if you love this and you want more of this, come on into our full moon circle in Capricorn. That's going to be this Monday, 12 p.m. EST via Zoom. And we're going to talk more about these ideas and so much more. I really cannot wait to come together on that sort of level with you all. Let's do it. Pisces. My Pisces babes, you guys are ethereal. You know, you're in the clouds. You're artistic. You guys are givers. You're the martyrs. You know what I mean? Ooh, did you guys see that? Wow. Woo! Save the best for last. Just kidding. We're all created equal. But Pisces, you pulled three tons, okay? So I need to tell you some stuff, all right? You pulled three tons, Remember, nine ends a cycle, 10 begins a new one. And you have pulled three tens right now. So there's a few things we need to know, Pisces, especially as the last sign of the zodiac, that it's time for you during this full moon in Capricorn to move on. Whatever that means for you, Pisces. Lighting malfunction will be okay. We're going to keep going. Whatever that means for you, Pisces, it's time for you to move on, okay? We've got our 10, 
our Ten of Swords coming in upside down, which can be quite a moody card to say the least, right? It's about trying your best to move on from somebody, something, or some sort of situationship and not being able to. But the card is coming in upside down, meaning you know it's time. You know it's time to let go. You just haven't really done it yet for whatever reason. Then we've got our Ten of Cups coming in right side up, right? You want your happy ending. You're looking for your happy ending. You're deserving of your happy ending, and you know it. You know, Pisces out of all 12 of the Zodiacs has the hardest time with boundaries. The hardest time with boundaries. And Capricorn arguably has the easiest time with boundaries. One of the easiest times, I'd probably say Aquarius and Capricorn are really good at setting boundaries and sticking to them. And then, Pisces, you pull this Ten of Wands energy. This, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Because Pisces will keep doing what it knows is unhealthy for it to do because it's just easier for everybody else. Pisces is our martyr. Pisces is our martyr. So what are you, like what are you going along with that you no longer deserve or desire Pisces that no longer works for you What is that and why are you doing it It's time for you Pisces to put your needs first no matter who's going to get mad about it Fuck them And you pulled knowledge and it's interesting that you pulled knowledge because knowledge is very like in your head sort of card and Pisces is very in higher crown sort of energy. Pisces is an artist. So the fact that you pulled knowledge, it's about logically knowing what you need to do versus feeling what you think you should do. There's a difference. Oftentimes what we what we think we should do is not what we should do. Because oftentimes what we think we should do, especially for you, Pisces, is to appease other folks. What does Pisces want? And how does Pisces get it? And these are themes and topics for you to explore for this full moon in Capricorn. Okay? I hope you all loved this. So good, so good, so good. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I hope to see you in Monday's Full Moon in Capricorn Circle. If you want to book a private reading, it is the link is down in the show notes or the video notes, whatever you call them here. Um, all my links are down below. Uh, join the Witchy Wellness Community Support Group, all of that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. And remember, what you desire and deserve is right within your reach. Bye.